is becoming more interconnected. We're not talking about the internet here, but uh, how much countries invest in each other. Direct investment across borders is rising fast. Now, last year, the global figure leapt by more than a quarter to over $900 billion. The United Nations has been crunching the numbers and says that it's mainly down to a boom in cross-border mergers and takeovers. And to tell us more about uh, the latest World Investment Report, I'm joined by Khalil Handani. He's the director of uh, the Investment Division at the UN Conference on Trade and Development. Welcome once again to Business International. It's, um, it, it's quite a, a, a weighty report, isn't it? Something, you've got it there in front of you, something like 300-odd pages. Indeed, but, but uh, half of it is data. Ah, OK. <laughs> but one of the most interesting findings uh, from the report, as far as I'm concerned anyway, is the growing presence of, uh, of companies from developing or, or, or transitional economies. That's right. The, that is a trend that has been continuing for some years, but it has really picked up in the last couple of years. Today, uh, uh, one out of four multinationals originates in a developing country. Is there any one uh, industry that, that dominates this list uh, uh, when, when you follow uh, capital flowing from, uh, from between nations? That's right. The um, uh, multinationals uh, from developing countries tend to concentrate at uh, the current period in natural resources, investment, uh, a lot of uh, large emerging economies need natural resources to fuel their growth. There's also uh, services is a very important sector and, uh, and of course the sunset industries which have been shifting compared to the advantage uh, to the developing world is now producing global players who are now competing in world markets. I, I was surprised to learn that the largest recipient country last year, that the nation to where most of this capital is flowing is the United Kingdom uh, and, and not China. <laughs> well, China has been in the past a major recipient and China is among the top three recipients uh, consistently, including last year. Uh, but as you mentioned, mergers and acquisitions an important driving force and uh, uh, notwithstanding the increase, uh, record increases in developing countries, developed countries still originate and still receive the largest amount of investment. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of money still flowing into China. It's, it's up there in, in, in the top three uh, recipient nations. There's also a lot of money flowing out again. Indeed, and, uh, and of course uh, Chinese companies are uh, looking to uh, invest in natural resources uh, to secure energy supplies in Africa, but also in, in uh, Russia. And, uh, and also Chinese companies are uh, looking for brand names. Uh, they are also part of the mergers and acquisitions uh, uh, mania. You, you mentioned Africa there. Of all of the developing regions, is, is there one area that, that, that particularly dominates as far as the, the inflow of capital is concerned? Well, the inflows of capital into developing countries is the record high ever. And uh, Asia, record high ever. Uh, Middle East, a record high because of uh, the in interest in oil and gas, and Africa, this is very encouraging, some 31 billion, which is also a record high. And of course, uh, Africa needs it. A lot of intra-regional investment is taking place. South Africa investing in uh, other parts of Africa. Okay. Khalil Handwani, thanks for being